Today on Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, we're talking about clearing and organizing your home office space. Are you still working from home full time or on a limited basis and trying to keep your office space organized? Do you need some help with your email or your to-do list? What one thing do you need to do when you're working from home? Learn about creating a peaceful office space as we begin our month focusing on interviews. Do you control your clutter or does your clutter control you? On Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, we'll teach you awareness as well as action steps to create change in your life. Come on, let's get started. The month of October is inspired because I've been wanting to do interviews for a while. And I always think it makes it interesting. It's easier for me to edit interviews than to schedule and do live. It just, I'm still caring for my mom and that's a priority. And so it's harder to do that. But I always think you guys enjoy listening. It's great. I know that it's me, but I think it's also interesting when I have guests and I'm always curious about what other people want to know and what their questions are. And all the interviews I'm sharing this month, people did their homework, did their research, asked really good questions, great conversations. And so it is something that I thought you all would enjoy. And even though we don't have five Tuesdays, I'm going to have five interviews this month, all fairly current, but all good for information. First up this month is from the Nothing Left to Give podcast. And I'm going to share did a couple interviews with her and I'm going to share another one at the end of the month because people really were excited about that one. So Chris McDonald is the host, but she has now started a new podcast called the Holistic Counseling Podcast. And that's holisticcounselingpodcast.com. And I'll put that in the show notes and on YouTube. She has almost 40 episodes from Nothing Left to Give and they're still available for you to listen. I don't know what will happen with COVID as I record this. The Delta variant is going on. I just read that Twitter is closing. I think it said their LA and New York offices indefinitely. And I can't remember if they put a hold on what they're doing. I know my friends in LA, she's not supposed to go back to the office until September. I'm obviously recording this. I'm recording this in August. But when these are released in October, there's a good chance that many of you will still be working from home or some type of a hybrid schedule. So I think it's good information, especially my most important point, which is, I think, very important if you work from home. I touch on mental clutter a little bit as having a clear office space can support you in having mental clarity. So enjoy my interview with Chris. Welcome back to the Nothing Left to Give podcast. I'm your host, Chris McDonald. I'm so excited for you to hear from today's guest. Her name is Julie Caraccio. She's an award-winning professional life and end-of-life organizer and certified life coach. She's passionate about supporting people in clearing clutter in all areas of their lives, getting organized, and becoming more mindful and aware. She's here today to talk about how to clear and organize your home office workspace. A fun fact about her is that she's about to start a year-long course on herbs and plant medicine, which sounds really interesting to me. Welcome to the show, Julie. Hey, Chris. Thanks for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. Can't wait to hear more about what you have to say. I feel like I'm always on the path of trying to be more organized. <laughs> you know what? I think like with anything in life, well, if it's doesn't come to you naturally, first of all, I believe it's a skill you can learn. Yes. So if someone's listening and they're disheartened, don't give up. You can learn to clear clutter. You can, you can learn to, you can to get organized. Absolutely. 100%. For sure. But before we get started, can you talk a little bit more about your work right now? Sure. So I am, as you mentioned, I'm very passionate about supporting people and clearing clutter. And this is because when you clear your clutter, you can share your gifts with the world. I have a definition. I consider myself a holistic organizer and declutterer. When you clear your clutter, you can share your gifts with the world. And I view clutter as anything that prevents you from creating the life you choose, deserve, and desire. Mm, powerful. 
I'm also passionate. I have recently moved towards the area of end of life organization. I was wondering what that was. Well, you know, we have this fear in our culture. I'm just going to speak to American culture and your other listeners, you know, would have a take on whatever their country they're from. We have this fear of death as we see it as something to be avoided. Like look at plastic surgery and all this money that's spent to be appearing youthful. We're all going to die. No one gets out of here alive. And so if you can accept death, that allows you to live your life fully. And so it would be maybe organizing all your paperwork to take to the lawyer, writing an obituary, planning a legacy. There are lots of components. Wow. I never even thought of that. What really started my passion was about three years ago, my father had my brother and me meet with his attorney and his accountant. And I want to say like, you don't have, my parents aren't super wealthy, but there were certain things, you know, one of the, my father's favorite lines was, I want a pauper's casket. I want the cheapest coffin you can find. And when your mother overrules that and buys something expensive letter, you know, but that he needed to get his wishes known. And it was, you know, I'm very emotional. I started to tear up. But when I pulled back, I thought, when he they go, I'm going to be able to grieve. I'm not going to have to be running around, finding passwords, wondering what did he want. And it brought peace of mind. And I'd like others to have that. So this show is geared towards burned out healthcare professionals. So why do you think organization and clearing clutter is so important in preventing burnout? That's a great question. Now, Chris, I could share statistics to the cows come home. (laughs) And I will try to avoid that. But I would like to touch on a couple of points. Women who have, they've done studies and, you know, Google's your friend here, but women who had cluttered homes had high levels of cortisol throughout the day. And I think as a therapist, you could probably address that better than I could. If they have piles, they've been less satisfied in life. It's harder for your brain to focus. Clutter has called, I've worked with therapists when working with clients and cause embarrassment and isolation. Mm. I mean, from a physical perspective, if you have a lot of clutter, you could slip and fall. You know, it's been linked to non-compliance and meds and they found that depression can cause clutter and clutter can cause depression. And that's just a few. Yeah, I've seen that for sure. You know, and from a work perspective, since, you know, right now I know we're all on COVID-19 and a lot of therapists are, and health professionals are doing telemedicine, But if you have a disorganized office, then a potential client might be like, hmm, not sure if I want to work with this person. Because they've done studies where workers believe that if you have a disorganized office, then you're less productive. It's unprofessional. You know, people have lost money from not getting reimbursed. And if you're, you know, in therapy, I don't know about you, Chris, but I want every dime back that I'm owed. Yeah. Sure. Especially if you can, it's something that's in your control, right? To to try to clear clutter and be organized. Yes. But I know a lot of our listeners have had made a quick transition to working from home and doing telemedicine, and it can be a big struggle to adjust if you're not used to that. So what kind of tips do you have to help them clear clutter in their workspace and help them get more organized? Well, the first thing I'd like to mention, because you said that people are working from home now create a space to work. Now, as I'm talking to you, I have a designated home office. My husband has a designated home office, but that might not be possible. So whether it's on their dining room table, it's a little nook, create a workspace area. And then Chris, when you're done for the day, you get out of that area. You don't take your work to your couch. You don't take your work to the bedroom. Make sure that there's a designated workspace. And once the day is over, you get out of that area. Because if not, that's going to create a lot of stress. It's going to create a lot of mental clutter, feeling like everywhere you go, there's work. work. Yes, exactly. The other thing that I would say is, and this can go with your, uh, your regular office, is be aware of invisible clutter. Now, I'm going to get a little weird for a moment. Everything's energy. Whether you believe that from a spiritual perspective, as I do, or physics perspective, So you might be like, hey, my office is all decluttered, but then you open up a door, stuff falls out, you open up your desk drawers, your files are a hot mess. That's energy. And people can feel that and sense that. And it affects you because there's this drip, drip, drip drain on the back of your head saying, wow, I've got this clutter. And it affects you whether or not you're aware of it. So the first thing I'm going to say is just be aware of invisible clutter. (laughs) Invisible is the word of the day. 
And then there are just two basic steps. I mean, we can go through the whole organizing thing, but what I'm going to suggest when you listen to any of these tips for physical organizing and decluttering is just sort out. So like if you have books, like for instance, on my bookshelf, I have writing books. I have the books for my plant class. I have books for self-improvement. So you could go through and say, all right, or you might have textbooks for health professionals. Like if you put all the textbooks together, you might realize, oh, I have a duplicate. I didn't know that. So when you put stuff that goes together, you can then take the next step of editing or purging. And that way you can let go of duplicates. And you're going to want to remember, you want to make sure like, for instance, if you take things home or if you have take something the bedroom to read at night, when you are going through the step of decluttering and getting organized, you want to make sure you have gotten things from wherever they're located. Does that make sense? That makes sense. The other thing I would suggest is to look up your space. And so one thing that helps keep clutter at a minimum and to get organized is to create areas or zones. So for example, I have a reference bookcase in my office and I use that. That I put though I have to get up and go get something because I use it infrequently. The filing cabinet is a whole other area. Now that's a little closer because I do filing a little more often than a reference book. And then I have an area for podcasting. I have an area for writing. And so I've set up different zones, which has allowed it to be like, okay, I know this is the home. When I'm finished, I need to return the book there. I need to return the file there. And so that's one thing that is going to help you keep your space to clutter. Mm. So really making that conscious effort to, to keep the spaces where you've designated them and, and putting stuff back is important. Exactly. And the other caveat I'll say, which might sound again a little strange, but I've seen it with clients. Are you inspired to be in your office? Mm. You know, if you come in and you hate the wall color or it just is not inspiring or it's too cold or it's too hot, make sure you've created an environment where you want to work. That's really important. What do you think would be important to have like on your workspace area that could be inspiring or make you feel more comfortable? Well, you know what? That is a really personal question. So for instance, I just got a bunch of dried lavender. I love the smell Ooh, of lavender. Nice. Yeah, Trader Joe's, really good deal. So I went and got some lavender. I have pictures in my office. Now, some people might disagree with this. I have a cat tree. So we've got one of the kitties who's snoozing right now with <laughs> me. But, you know, to me, they bring in hey, life and good yes. energy. And so if you're inspired by pictures or quotes, like I have a have on my uh, bulletin board 365 That's a good idea. Yes. Yeah. yeah, 365 days of greatness. You know, whatever it is, if you're visual, make sure if you smell, then get the dried lavender or do an incense stick. Whatever it is that, you know, that you, when you look at that, and, you know, it's like the cats, I want to make money so they can live a wonderful life. That's part of my inspiration. So whatever it is, it's going to inspire you. I have my essential oils too on my my desk now and Excellent. tried to just set it up with some crystals, just some things to kind of ground myself. And and with all my hand washing, I got my hand cream. <laughs> Excellent. No, see, that that's perfect. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And my uh, room spray. So I, I sprays to get rid of negative energy. And, and this is all stuff that I, I was using at my office. And I realized when I got to my home office, I was like, wait, I don't have the setup properly I, the way I want it. So right, and then didn't that make a difference when you brought? Yeah, it? Yeah, I feel better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think a lot of us are thrust into this full time. I, I was doing telehealth part time, but a lot of people it, it, just to be thrown in full time, and even if you've never done it, it's like discombobulating. <laughs> but you know what? I I'm so glad that you mentioned yeah. that because I want to bring up a point. I, you know, I shared my definition of clutter earlier, yes. but that can create mental clutter and. So I'm going to encourage you to see this time as an opportunity. If you haven't done telemedicine before, dang, that's a new skill you're going to learn. And maybe that allows you to get more clients, or perhaps that allows you to open you up to a whole other service. You say, hey, I'm going to do a free class. You discover you love it. People are interested, and you've just created another source of income. And one thing that I've noticed through life, Chris, is when I try to control everything, <laughs> You know, good luck with that. And so when this first happened, because my, you know, my business currently is yeah, pretty much in the tank. Now I've got books and classes and some other things, but the, the main source of income is gone. And for a moment, I panicked. And then I said, okay, Julie, let's take a step back. 
feel stuck but have no clue what you need to do to move forward? Would you like to feel energized and excited every day? Are you ready to create the life you desire? Julie's Caraccio supports you in finding the answers within and then taking action to make changes happen. Visit reawakenyourbrilliance.com to learn how Julie can support you with life coaching. Your husband has job security. You know, they've frozen hiring. You are going to be okay. You have family. You're not going to be put on the street, blah, 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 blah. And so when I came into that moment and said, I'm going to be okay, and I relaxed, I found out I had an unexpected source of income. And this was randomly found, Chris. It was like, I'm doing this, this, and this. And then it came. And then my husband had done a health plan and had to quit because they, they couldn't get the schedules to mesh. Well, I said, oh, let me check this. Well, that was over $500. So right back on the credit card. Fantastic. And so those opportunities were able to flow to me. Mm. Life opened up because I had, was clear. I didn't have. So was it you're, yeah, you're changing your mindset, right? So then things, Absolutely. Flow, yes. things flow better, right? Yes. And to say like, it's stressful for everyone. So anytime you can see it as an opportunity, what are the silver linings? How can I have gratitude? That switches your mindset mm. and that switches your energy. You talk like a therapist. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. I, I take that as a compliment. Yes. That's how we talk a lot of times, but even we get stressed out. So it's okay. No, but that's great why you're doing the podcast because, yes. you know, health professionals need this resource. For sure. And I know another stressor, and I know a lot of colleagues have the same problem, is just keeping up with email and organizing. And I don't know about you, but with this COVID-19, I have had uh, an abundance of email from every company I've ever dealt with or insurance or their COVID-19 policies. And it's just trying to keep up with that and keep my email somewhat organized. So do you have any recommendations on that? I do. And this is what I learned. One of the best tips I learned from a productivity specialist, productivity is not my specialty and that's an area unto itself, but this changed how I viewed email. And their suggestion was switch from thinking you're checking your email, because how often I say I've got to check my email, to processing because when you do that, you have to make a decision. Yes. So I get an email. Can I delete it? Do I have to take action? Can I hand it off to my assistant or my virtual assistant? Can I, do I need to defer on it now? Because someone says, I don't know, ask a question that you need to think through. So that's the first thing. Switch your thinking from checking to processing, because that's going to force you to make the decision. Because how many of us have emails languishing in, you know, the no decision zone. And, and a lot. Then, <laughs> right, right. And then also process your email. Don't, I remember when I had my last job, they had Outlook and I hated it because you'd get that unread mail and there'd be a ding or you'd see that bold thing or you'd have the little envelope at the bottom of your screen saying that, you know, the email needed to be answered. And so Block off certain times for it. So meaning maybe you check your email from 9 to 9.15, 12 to 12.15, 5 to 5.15. Don't be feeling like you have to respond every second of the day. You can also group similar messages together, like creating a folder. And, and one of the biggest mistakes I see that people make in getting organized is they say, ah, oh, well, so-and-so did it. They're the latest and greatest. And you don't take into account how you like to do things. And the example I'll use is my addresses in my phone, my phone numbers are organized by first name. So C for Chris, J for Julie. I don't do it by last name. Now, and most people tend to do it by last name. Now, for whatever reason, that works better for me. So it's really important to take in your lifestyle, how you do things. So if you group similar messages together, maybe you need to do it by topic. Like COVID-19. Yes, I have a whole insurance, folder. <laughs> right. COVID-19 insurance. Or you do by project or contact, but it's got to make sense to you. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. Instead of just thinking about, well, this worked for someone else doesn't mean it's going to work for you. So you really do have to exactly. know, know thyself, right? Yes, yes. For sure. Make it a lot easier. Mm, that's really helpful. So what about with to-do lists? Because I know that's, like I said, I'm, I feel like I'm always on the journey of trying to reorganize to-do lists and how to get things so that I'm not wasting time. And 
Yeah. Fantastic. Now I'm going to tell you, this is related. I'm going to call like to-do list kind of time clutter or that it kind of fits into that category for me. So one of the big changes that I made this year, and it's had such a great impact on me and I don't write it down, but part of my to-do list every day is self time. Simply, I know that I need to spend time on myself sometime during the workday. This isn't all the separate stuff I do. And so it's a really loosey goosey category. So it could include snuggling with a cat. It could include nap time. It could include closing my eyes for 10 minutes, putting my face in the sunshine for five minutes, hugging a tree. If I'm really stressed and I need to go take a bath, hey, you know what? There I've got go. the flexibility. So I would encourage you make time for yourself throughout the day. And again, if you're able to not write it down, I think that it helps because you don't want it to feel like a chore. You don't want it to feel like a to-do because that can add a lot more stress. Other things with creating a to-do list is I encourage you to have time for opportunities. When I worked in the, before I left my job, it was the craziest place I'd ever worked in. And there was literally an emergency every day. And so I got in the habit, okay, what's going to come around today? But then I switched my thinking and said, well, how can I see it as an opportunity? If I leave space, and remember, when you leave space in your life, you welcome new things. Mm -hmm. There is energy and space for things to come. So I would say, well, how can I leave room for opportunities? And then something that's really helped me with my to-do list is visualizing. Okay, so I look at my to-do list. I also say, okay, I see my handling any problem that comes my way and not stressing me out. I see my completing my five tasks that I have written for the day and getting your mindset. You know what? I will be able to do this. Also, if some of your to do's can be routines, that's really helpful. So if you, you know, like a routine, I talked about doing email yes. three times a mm -hmm. day, you have paper correspondence that you need to respond to. If you have some writing, I write every day and that, you know, there's a bazillion things to write, then I encourage you to do that as well. And finally, the other tip that I would add that I've done that's had a significant impact when I'm able. Now, if I have scheduled clients, I don't have as much flexibility, but like on an admin day, I'll say, okay, what do I feel moved and motivated to do in this moment? If I'm feeling like writing, I blam it out. Like I, you know, I was doing something the other day. I was like, eh, I'm really not feeling writing. Let me edit a video. Mm. And so asking yourself, like, what is my energy going to be best for right now? Because when you do that, you're excited to do it. It's easier. It's not like pulling teeth to get you to do it. Because otherwise, I think it could feel like a chore. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, and you know, when it gets, who wants to do chores? No. <laughs> eh. Right. And I think as as therapists and other healthcare professionals, we're, we live by our schedule, right? With when mm -hmm. clients are scheduled. So it's it, if you add in more things, well, this has to be my self-care time, then that's going to feel more like a chore and a burden. Exactly. But figuring out when you're going to do some kind of time for you and whatever that looks like. And I know I create my own schedule around um, exercise. So. Mm, um, okay, great. Yeah. Cause we can, we can <laughs> when you have your own private practice. You can, not everybody has that luxury, but you know, so Monday night's my yoga night, you know, Wednesday and Friday morning, I do exercise in the morning before I start work. I still do that now at home too. So See, that's I just, great. but I've gotten such a routine with, it, I don't even think about it now. It just is. And I think and it more, works for you. Yeah. And once you can figure out for yourself what, you know, what that self time can be and, and get into a routine of it, it does, it's not something you even have to make an intention as much. Yes, exactly. You kind of roll with it and just, this is what I do. Yes. And I always tell people too the same thing, the same time, the same day each week. <laughs> Well, you know, they've done studies and I can't remember off the top of my head, but when you do that, for whatever reason, yes. you get it done more quickly. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I can, I can totally attest to that. Just becomes ingrained after a while. Mm -hmm. So is there anything else with the mental clutter that you think would be helpful through this difficult time? Because the hard part, I think, especially from, for mental health therapists that are out there, it's, we're having a hard time and we got to help other people. <laughs> Right, right. So that's why, yeah, that's an excellent question. So that's why self care is really important right now. And again, you know, say, Chris, I don't know how, if, you know, my therapist or you work a 50 minute hour, if you get a break in between clients, I'm assuming that, you know, hopefully, yeah, you break, everybody's but, different. Right. But like, can I take five minutes to meditate? You know, sometimes that's all you need. Yeah. And exactly. When all else fails, I close my eyes and breathe. 
I'm like, okay, let's take five deep breaths. Maybe I need to ground myself. And if you have, I'm a huge fan of having a plan in place. And so that I don't get overwhelmed. Say, okay, like I have, you know, like this thing I was sharing with you before the podcast that I'm just experienced a crazy neighborhood thing in the past 48 hours. I'm like, okay, well, I can control how I respond. Let me take a deep breath. Let me breathe through this. Let me not respond. Let me, what others do is about them. How I respond is about me. That's one of my favorite little things yes. to say to myself. Amen to that. Right. And then whether it's meditate. I mean, again, like it doesn't have to be this five hour, one hour thing. You can do a lot in five minutes. Simply closing yeah. your eyes and centering yourself can have a huge impact. So that's something, you know, to clear your mental clutter is have a part of routine by that. Like, okay, or maybe it's even gratitude, you know, gratitude clears all your clutter yes, in every single area. Sure. And, you know, just little things and find what works for you. Make a game out of it. Ah, well, what can I try today that's different to clear my mental clutter? And so again, we don't want it to feel like a chore. Mm, yeah. And I think going through this, that one of the, and that's what I tell clients, everybody and family, that every day just naming some things you're grateful for that you have, mm -hmm. that you live in a house, that you, you know, can go outside and still breathe the fresh air, all those small things that add up. But they really do. You know, and that and again, like, and that's a, about other, whatever other self-care is going to support you. What yes. is it that you need? And, you know, I would say, I can't speak to healthcare professionals and therapists as you can, but, you know, be gentle with yourself and ask for support if you yes, need it. Exactly. You don't have to be the be all and end all for everyone and everything. Honor that you're feeling burned out. Honor that you've gotten the message. You know what? Something's off here. I need to reach out. No one's going to think anything less of you. Right. It is a hard time. And I think just having that self-compassion is... Yes. So what is your greatest passion outside of your career? My greatest passion outside of my career? Well, I am very excited about this. I literally start tomorrow. I'm excited about this online herbal and plant medicine class. When I had a really rough year in 2018, someone that I love and trust to do, I consider a mentor, said, let's try some teas. And that's really had a huge impact on me. And I would say also my family, the cats and my husband. I feel very fortunate to have them in my life. And, uh, that's why I do what I do. And how many cats do you have? We are now have five. Oh my we, gosh. <laughs> we uh, had three and then I fostered two kittens nice. and I went and we went and we would do the adoption fairs. I'm like, I can't let them go. And they're black cats or tuxedos. And, you know, they have a less likelihood chance of getting adopted. And I was like, it will break my heart if they go. So, and they were feral and that was the whole process. But yeah, we're a very happy cat home. Great. So what's your favorite quote or mantra that you live by? Well, I like the one I shared earlier about don't take anything personally. What others do and say yes. is about them, how you respond. But I would say the other one is to trust that you'll get what you need when you need it. You know, and just be like, it's going to work out. It's all good. And you know what? You always can't see it in the moment, but no, exactly. a lot of times later on you can. Mm -hmm. That would be a good one to put on your desk or work area. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, the mine also says, I got a little sign that says, breathe and let go of what no longer serves you. Oh, perfect. Wow. That's awesome. And I, I always like uh, tell people to just having signs to say, be mindful. Yes. Remember to, the mindfulness being in the present moment. Yes. So have I missed anything you think our listeners need to know about? That we no, I, I think you've got it all. I just would remind them that they're good enough, worthy enough and love no matter what. And especially in these stressful times, we can sometimes forget that. Amen to that. So what's the best way for listeners to find you and learn more about you? If they go to reawakenyourbrilliance.com, they can find out, find me on social media. They can find my podcast, Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, as well as my books. Of course, we need Excellent. it this time, don't we? Mm -hmm. Holy Absolutely. cow. Absolutely. I hope you enjoyed today's podcast and received a lot of helpful information on clearing, decluttering, organizing your home office workspace. Take actions from today's podcast. Check out Chris McDonald's podcast, The Holistic Counseling Podcast. Create a designated workspace. When you're done working, leave your work area behind. Sort your items into categories. Edit and purge your stuff. Put everything back in its home. 
create areas in your workspace. Recognize your invisible clutter. Make your office inspiring. Process your email. Make time for yourself throughout the day. On our next episode, we're talking about sustainability explored. Go out, clear your clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. When you clear your clutter, you can share your gifts with the world. Sign up for our free newsletter at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. If you've enjoyed Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, please rate, review, and share us.